Hi, it's Sherry from A Quilting Life, and today I'm here with a simple table runner tutorial. I actually shared three different versions of this table runner on my table runner video a couple of weeks ago and asked if anyone would be interested in a tutorial, and the responses were yes. So today I'm going to show you how to, how to make this. I'm going to also show you a similar option for making a little mug rug with the same technique. So let's get started and I'll show you how to make this simple table runner. So in the table runner video, I shared a few different versions I've already made. This version is a five block version made with fig tree fabrics and it has a linen backing, a moki linen backing, which I really like. And you can see that I've quilted this myself with just simple straight line quilting. Another version I shared, and I think this was actually the first one I made, is with some older fig tree fabrics and it's the same size, the 50 by 10. And then finally I shared the three block version and this is in Christmas fabric, Swell Christmas, with a Kate Spain Christmas fabric print on the back. And so this is another option with this. And I will show you some tips and tricks for making this runner, how to put it all together. And also, as I mentioned, we're gonna be looking at how to use this same technique for a smaller project. This project is perfect for jelly roll strips or even leftovers from jelly roll strips because the pieces are so small. Now, I just finished making a quilt with some of these fabrics that I'm gonna use for the tutorial today. And I knew that I was going to be making a table runner with some of my leftovers. So I actually cut some pieces into two and a half inch strips to use. Now what I recommend doing, even though this is scrappy, there's kind of a method to my madness when I put together a scrappy quilt, and I do actually do a little bit of planning. So what I do first is I take all my strips and I separate them by color. If your strips are all the same color, you could maybe separate them by pattern or design, or you know maybe, maybe it doesn't apply to the fabrics that you're using. But for these fabrics, I do kind of want to make sure I have a mix of each color in each of the blocks of my table runner. So I've got them all separated by color and I've got six different colors and there are only going to be five of them in each block. So I think it's going to work out really well. So what I do first is I just start by putting some strips together and I make sure that I'm not maybe putting the same pattern, just in a different colorway next to each other. And we're just gonna get a good, a good little mix. Now, this is gonna be a three block runner, so I'm actually gonna lay the whole thing out for this one. I don't always do that if I'm making the five block runner, but I am gonna do that with this one now. The two outer blocks are going to go the same direction and the middle block is going to go differently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I am not going to use this blue in this strip of five blocks because I can actually do that. Now if, if, if yours is such that that won't work out, that's okay too. I just kind of like to keep the same colors from touching whenever possible. And so we're gonna do this. And sometimes if it doesn't work out, I will just change the order of things. Until I just kind of get a good scrappy mix, okay? And then finally, I'm going to use the blue again here because it's not in the center block. Um, I'm gonna move 
this down just a bit because those are out of the camera range. Okay, I've got kind of a, a nice little pattern going on here. So once I'm satisfied that I've kind of got a good mix, I will actually just take my pieces and put them into piles so that I can sew them together. Now the first thing you're going to do, and you could actually do this step first, you could actually trim the fabrics before you separate them, but you're going to trim all of the strips so that they are two and a half inches by ten and a half inches. And so I'm just going to lay these out and I've got three stacked up here and two stacked up here and I'm going to trim them all at the same time. Okay, so I'm going to even the edges on this side and then I'm going to trim to ten and a half while they're all together so I can throw these away. So you want to make sure that all of your strips are the same length and I'll trim these quickly. One thing about this project is a quarter inch seam allowance is pretty important so that you can make sure that the blocks end up the correct size. And I do have a video on checking your seam, your quarter inch seam allowance to make sure it's accurate that you can watch if you're not sure about that. But again, I'm going to trim all these to 10 and a half inches. And just throw these bits away and then trim my final set. I don't like to cut more than four fabrics in a stack. I feel like you take a chance of losing a little bit of accuracy if you do that with the rotary blades. So I will usually stack them. If I have five, I'll do a two and a three. Otherwise, I'll put them in groups of four. Okay. So I've got my strips all cut. They're all two and a half inches by ten and a half inches, and I've got them separated into three different block piles. Now I actually sewed some of these together beforehand, and so I'm going to pull those out. And they might be a little bit different than what I figured out here. I, um, but I did kind of use the same technique when arranging these strips. So I've got the blocks sewn together. I used a quarter inch seam and I pressed to one side. And so that is how they came together. So now it's super simple. You're just gonna sew block one and block two together with a quarter inch seam and then add that third block. And I'll go ahead and do that now and then come back and show you a few more things. Okay, I'm back from the sewing machine and I just want to show you a couple things about how I pressed. So I'm going to flip it over and you can see that I pressed all the blocks in one direction. And then when I press this center block, I press them out onto the vertical strips on either side. It just makes it less bulky than when you're pressing it into the seam that has the horizontal strips. So press it out so it's super flat. And now there are a couple of ways that you can quilt these. You, you'll notice that all of the ones that I've showed, well two of them, I quilted myself. And what I did was I used a I used a quarter inch seam from each side of every seam allowance. And so this is super easy to do on your own machine. And so I just did two vertical lines and I started in the middle 
and did that block first and then I did the edges. Now I think I'm going to have this one, I'm going to just have it quilted because I'm taking some things to my quilter tomorrow and so I'm going to slip this in the bag. But in the past she quilted this one for me and she just did a simple crosshatch. Although crosshatching is also easy to do on your own machine, it's just a little bit time consuming. But this is actually, even though this one was done digitally, this is another good option if you're quilting it yourself and it works with all the different fabrics. But I'm probably going to do some type of a floral print on this. By the way, I don't think I mentioned that this collection is called Folktale and it's by Vanessa Gertson of Lola Boutique and it's hitting stores very, very soon, if not already. I'm going to use this blue floral for my backing. And then I think I'm going to bind it with this little print. I, I might change my mind. Sometimes I ch wait until I have it quilted and decide for sure on the binding. But right now, this is what I'm thinking about doing. Now, I wanted to show you one more thing if you change the size of these strips to one and a half inches, you can make the same block and you can use it for placemats. You could make several of them for a table runner. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little mug rug. And so what I, the, what I did with these strips is I used one and a half inches wide by five and a half inches long and I put five of them together and you can see that I did the quilting just like I showed you here except I didn't go on both sides. I just went on one side of the seam and then I'm just going to trim it. I've got a fabric on back and I'm just going to trim it. And then I will just go ahead and bind this and use it as a little coaster. So it's the same technique and you can quilt it yourself. If you are doing one of these table runners for a gift, you could also do a set of coasters to go with it. It's just, just another fun option that you can do with this project. I also will have a PDF that you can download with all of the measurements for the three block runner and the five block runner. I made that several years ago and I'm gonna actually update it and have it available for you with this video. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial. This really is something that I've made over and over again. You know, when you just wanna make something really quickly for a small spot or even for a bigger spot when you're using the five blocks, it makes a great gift because you can piece it and quilt it yourself all in a couple of hours and do the binding and, and give it to someone quickly that it makes a great holiday decoration or something like this which is more of an everyday use. So I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope you also enjoyed making, seeing how to make the little mug rug or coaster that uses the same technique. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and thanks so much for stopping by.